Hello everybody, welcome back to episode number five in our track building tutorial series. So you should now have gone through the very long and painful process of getting to this point where you have in episode one downloaded and installed all of your resources and the track builder. In episode two, you created your height map, which is the jumps and the whoops and the corners and the bumps and the ruts, etc. In episode three, you worked on texturing, so making the actual on track and off track look as pretty as possible. In episode four, you tackled the very difficult program that is blender and now you have all of your objects dotted around you've got your bows where you want them to be uh, i mean i've got a little start area over there as well we've i've got my stadium over top and everything so now you should be at a point where you have your entire track done like everything that you want the track to be itself is done and is contained however you'll notice that if i fly through our wall right here and i go into my pit area uh, this is not where we want the start gate and also when i go to track I also don't want to be spawning inside the wall of my stadium. So today we are going to go through timing and the pit areas and the start gate. So everything that is, uh, I guess, timing slash race data related today. Now, I will make you fully aware that the program we're about to use is not an easy program. I literally have an entire page of notes, which I will be reading from directly because uh, obviously we only use it like once or, or, or twice, depending if you make mistakes, per like track. And if you don't make too many tracks, you'll forget how it, use, how it works every time. So what we want to do is you want to boot up the uh, trusty old Resolute Krakens track builder, uh, which we have right here. Uh, so we've got our texture in done. We've got our material selected, which is subsoil. We've got our scenes done, which is all of our objects. Uh, we have, uh, I haven't bothered with surface air at all. I don't bother with that. You've got your lighting sources all set up as well. Uh, you've got your your colors of your skies and all that done. And this this is everything in here. You've got on the right, your meters uh, for your track scaling. All of this is all done. You're all happy with it. So now we scroll down to the very, very bottom here where we have got track editor. This again is one of them tools that we installed at the very, very beginning in episode one. You open her up and you full screen her and she looks a little bit like this. So if we go to file and we go to load and we go to our track building folder. So for me, it's track building, tracks, uh, Aberdeen and then Aberdeen again and it'll give you a file here which has .trh at the end of it. You want to open that up and give it a second or two whilst it loads it and I want to show you an example of something right here that will be very handy if you do a similar thing. Uh, so first thing you want to do is you click on draw at the top left and you click on wireframe and this will make it so you can actually see things. I'm about to, on, on you zoom out on the scroll wheel and you move around by clicking down the scroll wheel and moving your mouse around. You'll notice because I've got a stadium, it's overlaid in here and can be a little bit difficult to see exactly where you want to be. If you have this issue and you want to remove it, if you go into Resolute Kraken's track builder and go along to your scenes, you also notice how we split things up before, whether you've got like bows or this and the other. You can include things that you want and don't want at the same time. So I'd recommend, for example, for me, I want to turn my stadium off so I can see better. I would turn it off. I would do a quick build all, let it run through the whole process again, and then we do what we just done, where we load up our track, track editor here, file, load, and we'd reload this, which is actually what I'm going to do now, because I want my life to be as easy as possible. Because you can see, just through the cracks of the stadium, we've got all of our easy up tents here, and I want to be able to place where I spawn in in those tents, which we can't do right now. Now our track build is complete, we can go to file, load, load our TRH again. And they'll give it a second and it will generate a new one for us. And there you go. Our stadium's disappeared. So now I can see everything that I need to see. And it's happy days. So you'll notice that by default, you have got a little track here, which actually conveniently lines up almost perfectly with the track that I've built in terms of layout. But I promise it's not meant to. This is the stock uh, Poboso example track. So now this is where I'm going to refer to my notes. So just so we get things all in the right order here. Uh, so what you want to do is you go to centerline. You go to start area because you want to start with the start section first. Uh, you want to go to center line again and then select new. Now uh, we then need to right click uh, away from this, by the way. You want to right click anywhere outside of your uh, your little pre-made map there. And you want to go to add segment and you just want to press OK. Now what this will do is at the very bottom left hand corner of your map right here, it will create you a little purple arrow. If you click on this arrow, now you can move it about in various ways. The top part where the arrow point is, you can move to extend it and rotate. The bottom part is how you move the actual arrow itself. So what you're going to want to do is drag this over to your start. Now let's zoom in 
here like this. Can we let's make that a bit smaller? I don't need that at the bottom, so we've got more room. Uh, so I'm going to drag it over to my start right here, and then I'm going to hold the top of it, rotate it around, and this is going to be my start straight right here. Now, let's say I'm happy with the length of that start straight right there. If I right click on this yellow line here, we will have the option to add a straight, add a curve. I'm going to add a curve, and I just want it to end basically where the first turn ends. So I want it to be maybe right about here, I think. So you see, in terms of where our start actually is, that that is it. Like our start starts here, our start ends here, and then we're kind of back to back to normal proceedings, back to the normal track. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, center line. Let's make sure we're doing this right. And then you want to click Merge. Done. And then you want to go to center line again, and you want to save as. So for me, I need to find my track folder so if we go into track building tracks Aberdeen now this is very important that you save this as the correct file name it wants to be called exactly the same as your file is at the top and I need to remember that I've spelt mine incorrectly so I need to spell it incorrectly here as well so it's going to be UK AX uh, round three and it's Aber no no it is spelt there correctly there's Aber Aberdeen and then we need to do underscore Oh, not in caps, underscore start. And the underscore start will be in lowercase. You want to press save. And now we need to move on to the main part of the track. So we're going to go to center line. We're going to go to main. And now if we right click and we will do add segment again and OK, this will give us another arrow down here at the bottom right. Again, we're going to click on this and drag it to the track. Now you want to start this one where your finish line is. So we're going to move this over to the top of my finish jump here. I'm going to rotate it around and I'm just going to bring it all the way over to the corner like so. And now I'm going to try and speed run through this as quickly as we can. And we now need to fill out the entire track. So I'm going to right click curve. I'm going to bring the curve around all the way around in the corner to about let's try and make it as straight as possible and then add a straight. Add the straight all the way down to this corner here. Add a curve. You can see the uh, the process that we have here, where we're just drawing around the entirety of the track. Uh, I actually uh, what so what happens here is so this this straight line, I'm I'm a little bit OCD. It's going slightly to the right here. So if I click on this arrow and I click anywhere on the one below, you can move it around. You can see the top one also follows it being moved. So we go click back on this one. Right click, add curve, round to here, right click, add straight, all the way down to this corner, right click, add curve, round again, add straight. And obviously this takes a lot less time when you are working with an indoors track rather than an outdoors track, but that's why I prefer making indoors tracks so much. They're a lot more straightforward to do. Uh, we'll add a curve again to about there and then add straight. So with this uh, final straight or st final straight or curve, it doesn't matter which, you want to try and get it as close as you possibly can to where you started. Uh, so for me, obviously, it's, it's out of shape a little bit. So let me move the one before that. So what you're going to do is get this as close as you can without overlapping. Make sure they don't overlap. So you can see we've got a tiny, tiny little gap here between the two. Uh, so now if I zoom out and I click anywhere else on my map, so you can see it's deselected. You don't want any of these to be selected at all. You want to click on the last one and click out with left click and then right click and you want to press close. Now, if we go back up to center line and we go to merge and we go to center line and we go to save as and we're in exactly the same folder as before. And you want to call this one the same as the file name. So UK AX round three. Aberdeen, and then we do not want anything else. That is it. Just UKX, round three, Aberdeen, and save. Now, what we can do is we close out of this, and you want to reopen it again. So, file, we'll press load, we'll press on our Aberdeen.trh. It will show the default one that we had before. It won't show our one just yet if I zoom out and move across. See, so we're back to the default one here. I'm going to draw and wireframe again to make things look better. And then you want to go to center line. You want to go to your start area, center line, open, and we'll open our start. 
then centerline and merge. Then we go to centerline, main, centerline, open, select our main, centerline, merge. So now we've done that, we can actually go back going to file, save, and save over top of our original PRH file. So replace it and yes. Right, so now if you was to uh, close all this out and to go in game and open it up and you had Max HUD running where you can see your map on the corner of the screen, uh, this would show up, this track right here, it would show the purple line for you. However, uh, timing wouldn't work because we haven't set any checkpoints, we haven't set where the starts are or anything like that, you haven't set where you spawn in. Uh, so that is what we do now. So at the top, if you go to view and you also go to race data, this will give you this screen here on the left. Now this is kind of like your central hub of making things. If you click the MX bikes option, uh, then what you can do is we've got our checkpoints here. We can type in where our start finish line is. Uh, we've got our splits, which if you remember also, if you run Max HUD, you, you have like three splits throughout the course of the lap. You've got your start, you've got sector one, sector two, and then the finish line again would be sector three. Uh, we don't care about speed trap because this is for like GP bikes. Uh, hole shop you can do as well if you want to and then we've also got buttons down here for the grid which is to select where your start gates are and you've also got an option down here for pits as well which is where you spawn in on the map so what we're going to do first is we're going to set the checkpoints for our track uh, and that all starts with selecting where our start gate is right here uh, so if we go to start finish line which is going to be this option uh, if we go along our track you'll notice at the bottom right down here we have a long and a lap. So if we, need to, we need to look at that long number. If I follow this purple line, you'll see it goes up as we go around the track. And this is the good part about what we've done is our start finish line is dead on zero. So we've not got to change this at all. However, what we do have to change is left and right. This says how far you extend your track. So for left, you always want it to be a minus. So let's say minus five. You can see our line here now extends out to where the finish line ends. And you can extend this as far as you want, obviously, be very mindful that you might be overlapping other parts of the track which you don't want it to do and also be mindful if you have your line too short if someone takes off the jump on this far left side and misses it their lap also won't count so you want to experiment with numbers you can do um full stops or you can do decimals as well so i could do five and a half if i think that uh, suits the track length properly and um, but for this i'm going to do about 5.2 so it covers the entire length or the entire width of this jump it also gives you a little bit extra wiggle room. You shouldn't really be taking off here because it's through the bowels, but uh, that, that is all down to you yourself. And then on the right, it will be a positive number and exactly the same thing. You can just edit it as far as you want your line to go. I think I'll stick on five for that. I don't want it going all the way through there. Uh, so that is where our start finish line is. So this will start your lap from counting at the beginning when you cross over it once it's all saved. However, your lap won't count because you haven't got any sectors in here at all. So now if we go down to our splits, uh, we can just press the splits button and it will make two for us by default. We can see it's added in sector one down here, sector two up here. However, I want to move them about myself a little bit. Uh, so if we hover over this one, you can also see at the bottom right, the long number is 131. That correlates to this number right here. It says 131. Uh, so I want my split to be, let's say, about here just before we get into the corner. So I want it to be on 125. So we'll just type in 125. Now our line has moved down. And you want to be a bit generous with the lines on this split. So we don't want it to go that far over because it's going over our other lane. So if we do like minus, let's try minus six. Do minus six, six, six there. So you see it's going off the edge of the track. But let's say someone gets yeeted through this section and they fall off the track. You still want their lap times to count. So you want the, the splits to be quite generous here. So I'm actually going to leave this one on the right going all the way off the side of the track as well. Uh, we then go round to number two, and I think I just want number two to be at the end of the whoop section, so we're not kind of going across the start state straight or anything like that. And also, it forces people to actually go through the whoops when you do it like this as well, rather than cut them out. Uh, so we're going to go to long is 244. So to select the next one, we press a little arrow, so now we're hovering over number two. I'm going to go to 244, which is put it where we want it. Then we want our left side, how wide do we want the left side to be? Maybe about 6, 5.5, uh, 5.8, that's that looks about good. And for the right side, we don't want people just to cut the whoops out completely. So I want to be a little bit stricter with this one. Let's go to about 6 here, maybe maybe 7. Maybe they get a bit of a wild kick and they go off the edge of the track. 
this will kind of incentivize them to move over. Although, actually, I want to move it a little bit further along. Let's move it further along the long side. So, 246.5. So, we've put it right at the end of the whoops here. So, people can kind of get back on the track before the whoops end. And this shouldn't interfere with the start at all. Because why would anybody be cooking a hard left out the start there? So, we've got our splits up. So, now if you wanted to uh, run a lap, you'd hit the finish line, you'd hit your sector one, you'd hit your sector two. And as long as you hit these points, your lap will count. However, now we want to add some checkpoints. So our checkpoint area is at the top right hand part of this box. We want to press add and this will spawn a checkpoint in on one. However, we want to start with our start area. So if you click the little box circle here for start area, it will move it down to the start. And I don't want too many gates here. I think I want one to kind of end up about where these bows end. So before we end up crossing the track. And I can, you can just experiment with this with numbers so long. Let's try it. Long 15. Looks pretty good to me. Do that. And then on the right-hand side, I don't mind it being all the way over there. So in case people want to jump over a burn for some reason, they can. Um, we can also do the left-hand side exactly the same, which I think I'll leave it as it is as well. Um, but we have a penalty box right here. So you remember in-game, on a lot of tracks, on a lot of laps, you might get some cuts. You can be as brutal as you want with these cuts. So any checkpoint that is missed, you can choose how many cuts they get. Most of the time I do one because I'm aware that missing time and gate slot time is an accident and you don't want to be penalised too much. You can be horrible. You can give them 30 seconds of cuts if you want for missing a gate. Uh, I'm going to keep it as one. Um, and then we will uh, also need to click. This is just for the start only because you don't want this checkpoint to be included in your normal lap. Otherwise, you'd have to go through the whoops, turn around, go back down the start straight. You just want this on start only. And then we're going to press add to get another checkpoint in here. And for number two, I think we also want to click this for, I think we click this on start area. We'll do start area here. And I kind of want it to be as far along this line as possible. So they have to hit the start straight. And then they also need to be hitting this first corner here. I actually quite like where it's put it. So they have to start turning. Now we'll, we'll pull it, we'll pull it towards the end. So let's experiment with how far this needs to be. 70, no, 75 is too much. Uh, 73.5, there you go. We'll put this as far over as we can. So on the left side again, this is way, way, way too much right now. I want this to be a lot more strict so we're not going through the bowels here. So I want this to be about 5.5, as you can see it going through this left bow. And on the outside, I'll be, I'll be lenient again. I won't be too lenient because I'm well aware that this is a very tight first corner. People could get yeeted off the track. So this gives them a chance to get back on the track without being penalized too harshly for it. So I'm going to leave it where it is right there. So now we go around doing the rest of our track. So if we go to add and we want to keep this one on center line, because we're done with our start now, we want center line only. And I want my first checkpoint to maybe be somewhere around, let's say this area here so people aren't cutting the track so i want it to be 34 along so 34 also realize that go go through and check this every now and then scroll through all your checkpoints i realize that i have the penalties set for this one as five seconds let's go back to one let's go back to checkpoint number three i want checkpoint to be about there uh, i want the penalties to be one off the left side of the track i do not want it going over into the other lane so i'll leave that on about five and on the right side, we can be a little bit more lenient because you're not going to gain any time from going around the outside of a berm. We can leave that on about seven. And then we want to click, we don't need to click start or both because this is just on our center line only. We're going to click add. And I like, so this is completely up to you. I, so let, let's say I had my checkpoint here now. People could, if they knew where the checkpoints were, they can hit this one, low line, miss out that corner, cut through the bows here and go here, which we don't want. We want people to hit the corners where they should hit them. So I'm also going to put a checkpoint in the middle. So that would be long equals 45. So let's do that. Uh, actually 46, no, 45 and a half. There we go. So the left side, we're going to have nice and short. So it's not going miles off the track. Uh, so we want it to be on three. We'll leave it on three. So they, they can go to about here before they get cuts. And then for the length, we can make this really, really long because people might get punted over the berm. And they, it lets them rejoin without getting too many cuts. And uh, we'll set that to one as well. And you can see the process that we're going through here. We work our way around the track. 
add in all of our markers around the entire track all the way around until we get back to the finish line. Okay, so I've got all of my checkpoints in here. You want to do a quick skim through all of them at the end to make sure that you've got your penalties all set up correctly, which I have, which is lovely. And you can save this at this point just to save your progress as well. It'll pop up, but if it doesn't pop up with the relevant file, you want to go into your tracks, you want to go into your track folder, track folder again, and it'll be a file with a .rdf at the end of it. You can save and overwrite that, and it'll just save where you're at so far. Uh, also, we can choose where we want our hole shot to be. Uh, so I want my hole shot to be at, so was it 286? And you can see it's put a, a little HS there to where our hole shot is. Uh, we also need to do exactly the same thing. We're going to do minus five. Uh, oh, actually, that doesn't, you can see it's not actually quite around the corner. So I'm just going to move that a little bit further. Let's try 288. Hmm. 287. 287. I like 287. Uh, so we're going to do on the left side, we're going to do 4. Point, what was it? 4.7, 4.6. So it's just sneaking through uh, the bail here, if you can see that. And on the right side, we're going to do it about the same. So 4.6. Yeah. So you, if you want to get the whole shot, <laughs> you've got to stay within the bails and you've got to hit this first jump first. Uh, we can also do, I think that's actually us done now on this main page. So we've done our splits, done our start, done our checkpoints, done our whole shot, and it is. So now we can move over to grid and to pits. So for the grid, you want to click on our grid button right here, and it gives us an additional box. So now you'll get your menu looking like this. The very, very first thing you want to do is click the MX Bikes button. Otherwise, you'll be working with GP Bikes uh, gates, and you don't want that. So what we're going to do here is at the top, we get to select how many gates we have. So in my example here, there's going to be 22 gates in total. We've got a double line up with 11 at the front, 11 at the back. If you're doing outdoors, so you're doing a mix, you might want 40 gates. You might want less than that if your track's a bit skinnier. Uh, we'll see in due time. So for me, I'm doing 22 gates. Uh, stalls per row is how many gates you want per lineup. So again, if you're doing outdoors and you had 40 gates, you probably want 40 gates in one in just in one line. You don't want double gate lineups or anything. Uh, so I'm going to do 22 gates and I'm going to do 11 gates per row uh, so now if i click on absolute and we get to enter where our gates are located so at the bottom right of the screen we have got our x and our z axis and anywhere i move my mouse that number changes so i want to find the middle of my start gate which for me is about 90.4 to 161 so we'll do 90.4 161 and we've got our gates here however you'll notice our gates we've also got some some prongs coming down off of each and every gate uh, how this works is currently our gate is facing upwards we want the prongs so if i'm going down start straight this way we want the prongs to be coming out the back of the gate so i need to rotate this 180 degrees just like so and also you the gates are a little bit funky in a sense uh, let me actually just change this lane width to one so they're actually the right size you'll see at the end here We've got an additional prong coming out the end. And we've also got another one coming out the end here. If you can see that, there you go. This is correct. Uh, so how it works is each prong inside of this is each gate. So if we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's exactly how many we need. Uh, however, I can notice if we zoom right in on this gate here, you can see it's a little bit far over to the left. So we actually want to move it over to the right slightly so if i get our, our discord or get our values here so we've got we was on 90.4 i think i want to move that over a little bit to 90.43 it's the tiniest little little movements here uh, 90.45 90.46 seems to be about in the middle and then what's also worth mentioning is the start gate itself kind of overhangs this line so whilst this looks like it lines up with the edge of uh, our metal grates here, I actually want to move it back a bit. I want to move it up. So if I do point 0.1, now we'll do point. This is just from trial and error and experience, knowing where to move the gates to. So I've got it like that. Uh, so I've moved it. You can mess around with this as much as you want. You can mess around with the location, etc. Just make sure that your direction is facing the correct way. And then I also want to do row spacing so right now all of my gates are going to be on top of each other here if i set the spacing so i've set it to four you set it to three you can see it's closer two is closer still one is a small gap 
um, but I want to make it so that these are nice and spread out. So I'm going to do 3.5, 3. 3. 3.6 looks about good to me. So you can see the gap between the grate and this is about the same as the gap between the grate and this here. Uh, so I'm I'm happy with that. I'm happy with where our gates are located. Uh, you can also choose to have the so the inside for me here is gate one. If this was your inside over this side, uh, you could flip them around and press right this way, and it's just an easy way of switching back and forth. But I like it how it is right now. Uh, we can also select where our thirty second board is placed. Uh, so let's say I want my thirty second board to be about here. I then want this on my x and y axis. It's about ninety point five and 154.7 so 90.5 and 154.7 and we've spawned in our, our 30 second board here uh, this is facing the correct position uh, so you can see our prong is coming out the back this time so the flat line is facing the way we want it to go if we wanted our 30 second board to be facing the other direction then you just do a very easy change the angle 180 degrees we don't want that we'll leave it at zero and that is good to go so this is, uh, we've got our checkpoints done now. Our checkpoints are all all happy. We've got them all around the track where they need to be. Uh, we've got our sectors set up as well. We've got our start finish. We've got our hole shot. We've got our 30 second board and we've got our start gates. The final thing that we need to do is select where you spawn in on the map. So if we go into pits and it will spawn in exactly a very similar box to the last one we was in. We'll go into our pits here. Um, this is, creates a little bit more trial and error. Uh, and I usually have to do something different, like notepad related for my arena cross pit. So I'm going to do this as straightforward as I can so you guys can get the gist of it because not everyone does weird and wonderful things from all the bird tracks. And um, we are going to try and find a uh, start point. So, first of all, number of pits, I'm going to have 22 because it matches how many start gates I've got. Uh, we are also going to go over here. We've clicked our absolute button so we get to choose where they spawn. So, I'm going to hover over my temp here. This is at uh, 99.25, 187.85. So 99.25, 187, boy, was it 95? I can adjust it. 0.95, and you can see now that we have spawned in here. It's facing the wrong way, so I need to type in the angle 180. And uh, obviously, uh, bear in mind, our bike is going to spawn roughly here. So the back of the bike might be coming out of the tent. So what I want to do is move this down slightly. So I'm going to decrease my z axis i can do 187.2 so then our bike will spawn here and we got a little bit of room to work i'll leave it on 187 actually we'll leave it at the front uh, so now we need to do the spacing latitudinally so we're going along to the right so let me just show you what each one of these does so if we go along to our spacing here uh, we've got spacing long that goes that way we've got also need to do our columns sorry i completely forgot um, let's let's say you've just got a general pit area. You might want to do your columns. You might want your stuff to be something like this, where they're spaced out wide, they're spaced out long, and you've just got them set up almost in like boxes. And let's say if you're on a nationals track, you've got a pit area over here. You can just put everybody over there. Happy days. However, in my scenario, I need them to kind of fill out all of these tents or all of these easy ups because that's where I want them to spawn. Uh, so to mess with this, I'm actually going to do minus because I want it to go to the right rather than to the left, five. Uh, I actually want to go a bit further, six. So what I want is for every two of these, uh, every two of these easy ups, I want them to spawn. So I want one in the left of AJP. I want one in the left of Crendon. I want one in the left of the Ashmore. So we're going to mess around with our distance here until we get exactly that. So let's do 0 0.45. That seems to be quite good. I also need... Uh, two column. No, I want eleven columns. Sorry, and then this should go all the way down to the end here on number eleven. You can see I'm overhanging a little bit, which means that my numbers here are a little bit too much. So let's just try six point four. That actually looks a lot better. Yeah, you can see each each one of these. It's really hard to see on YouTube, isn't it? Each one of these tents now has a little red marker inside of it. Uh, also, what I want to do, which is what I'm trying to experiment with now, usually. I do some very backhanded way of doing this, where I'll save this one, I'll come back in, I'll rotate it so the other gates are in this one, I'll go into photo, I'll go into Notepad, mess things around. But I think for this one, I want these ones to be here. I also want the other ones to be all the way down at the bottom here as well. And to do this, to start moving these downwards, I'm pretty sure longitudinally, if I do minus five, yeah, you can see they spawn below. 
So if I do something ridiculous like minus 30, oh, we need to go really far. Minus 90, where are they at? They're here, got to go further still. Minus 100, not quite there yet. Uh, minus 112, too much. 111, too much. 110, too much. 108, 7, 6, 5. 105 seems to be about good. Uh, they are shifted over ever so slightly. So I would actually have to change this a little bit now. So I would go back into my uh, Blender and I would move all these gates down to the right slightly. Alternatively, I can show you uh, what I usually do, which is a very weird and wonderful way. Whereas if I, let's say this is all saved now and I've got them exactly where I want them. If I exit out of this and I press save, we write over our RDF and press save again. Save, yes. So if I come into my track folder, Aberdeen, Aberdeen again, and we find our .rdf file here. We right click, open with notepad, and this gives us all of the information that we've just saved down. What I would do is I come down here to my pit lane, which we're working on. You can see it's got our 22 stalls. Uh, it's got like 11 columns, etc. I would start here, highlight stall zero. I would go down to stall 10. So this is our first 11 in total. Copy, paste in here in a new new document. I would close this. I would minimize this, minimize this. And so now what we do is we've got a backup essentially. So we've got all of these gates here where we want them to be. Now what I'm going to do is adjust these other gates. So from gate 12 through to gate 22. So they're in these tents and facing upwards. So in order to do that, we do exactly what we was just doing. Let me change this to about 10 so we can get our bearing here. Uh, I want to do where are we at? We'll do change the angle so it's going to be 180, and we want gate 12 to be all the way down here. So, in order to do that, if I kind of line these up where I need them to be, let's do space long, let's do about, I need this to be a positive number so it goes down, let's do two, three, yep, that's fine. And then we just need to adjust this in the right way. So, we actually want number one to be about here. Here, which is 179. Oh, I was using long, sorry, I need to use X and Z at the bottom. I told you this is one of the most confusing uh, programs that you end up using. I want to be 166, 166.05. And then I also want the height wise, that actually looks pretty good there. You remember 12 is the one that we're lining up here. Uh, if I want it to go up a little bit, I actually want it to go a little bit less further over. So if I do 165.5.6.7, that looks good. And then we want it to go up. So we want the Z to be a little bit higher, 187.4, about there. So what will happen now is we've got our gate 12 through to gate 22, where they need to be inside these tents. Uh, what we do is we close out of this. We save again. We overwrite our file again and do yes. Now we go back and we open it in Notepad. And you'll see if I go to now, uh, let's go to stall zero. You can see it's actually saved it here, and we don't want it here. We want it where it originally was, which is exactly why we created a backup. So you'll see my stall zero here, 244.5, 40.7, does not match up with this. So very, very easy way of doing this is I will select these and copy. Actually, before I do this, let me not be a goober. I'm going to file, save, overwrite. Yes, and come out. Now we can do this. So we'll get our. So I've started at start, start stall zero, ended at this uh, closed bracket. So I'm going to come down to start stall zero, come down to 10 at our closed bracket, and paste that in there. So now, delete one. Uh, we have got from stall zero to stall 10, which is pit number one to pit number 11, we've got facing down on the top set. And then at number 11, which is 12, all the way to 21, which is 22, we've got them facing up the other way. So I save this, close out of this, close out of this, and uh, that should be all of our timing done. So I'm just going to turn everything back on. So we've got everything in here. You want to go to your center line on the right hand side here, and you want to select your center line. So it's your UKX RAM3 Aberdeen.pcl. You want to select your start center line, which is the one that we've done with underscore start in there. And uh, now you want to press build all, let it run, 
and then load the track up in testing and see if it all works. I already see a very good sign. You can see that we've spawned here underneath one of the tents and we are indeed in the track, which is a big old W. So then when you join a multiplayer server, uh, this will be gate one. This will be gate two, gate three, so on and so forth. And then the people on the other side will spawn facing this direction and we're happy days here. And also if I load up a uh, map, we can see we've got our map on the right hand side now as well. And I'm just going to go and spin a lap just to make sure that everything is all working correctly. Uh, so that'll be test number one, and then test number two will be going into multiplayer and checking that the start gates are also working as they should do. So as we come around this right here, hit this finish line, our timer should start at the top left, which it did. That's a W. And now if I try and just behave myself and stay on track as much as I can, I'm not going to hit any big lines. You can go quad quad through this room section right here, which I'm, I mean, happy with because it's a very fun line, but it was accidental. We've hit our first sector and it's counted that. We should hit our second sector here. And it's counted that. Lovely. And you can also go quad double through this section. But again, we'll play it nice and easy. Make sure we stay on the track. Round to the right. And now this should count our lap time. And it has done. 29.6. So now what we can do to test if it's all working in general as well is... So I know that I set my sector in this next corner. I'm going to miss that out. I'm going to cut across the track here and cut through here. So now next time I go and hit the finish line uh, we should have missed an entire sector out and our lap won't count at all go and do that jump our way through the inside rut so this lap should not count and it didn't okay so that's working really really well so I'm hoping now as we go and fly over here towards our start gate that all is well all is correct so we do see them they are facing in the right direction as well which is a big old W uh, you can see however they are overhanging my grate a little bit. So, you know, when we was just edit them in uh, track editor and they were, I was kind of moving my line back a bit rather than right here. I need it to go back further. So that is quite an easy fix. You just go back into your tread track editor, uh, move them up a little bit more along the, I think it's the X axis that is up. And uh, yeah, then it would all shift backwards and all be a-okay. So I, I won't do that within this, but you get the idea. If we go to select gate, you can see that we can select through all of our different gates as well. Uh, puts on the back row i mean you can't because where the camera's placed on the back row it puts you through the wall but you get an idea of where you're going and then we just do the final test which is we'll start a race we will also go what i will do to make life easier is i'm going to turn chat on and we can see like our cuts and stuff that we're getting as well so we are on the start gate which is also a big old w we'd also have people lining up behind me here as well just going to wait for the gate to drop and we'll do exactly what i just done in testing um, we'll do three laps. First lap will be just a normal lap to see if it counts. That second lap will be just missing out one checkpoint to see if we get a cut. And then the third lap will be missing out an entire sector to see if we get a lap not counting at all. So we should also be able to see once this race is done if we got the whole shot because I did set the whole shot line on that jump also. We go over this, send this bad boy up and over. Start of the lap has started. Then I've got the quad into here going to triple out the quad out is a lot harder than the quad in so i need to be very careful and for testing purposes we don't need to go too crazy i don't want to go flying off the track and get more more cuts than necessary go through our whoops round to the left quad into here double round to the right done so that lap time should count which it did the reason it says 41 when it's about 30 second lap time is you forget that we have to go around the start as well uh, and it adds that time on to lap number one. We are going to go through this sector here. We're going to miss this next little sector or ne next little checkpoint. So now when we hit the finish line this time, we should have one or two seconds of cuts. I just missed out a timing gate rather than missing the entire sector. We'll triple our way into the corner here. Over the finish line. And we do. We've got one second of cuts at the top. And now the final thing that we can do is to miss out the entirety of the sector so like i did in testing i'm just going to go around going to cut the track cut the corner going back on so now our lap time shouldn't count at all so you can see on the left on my timing it says unknown three out of four laps it should hopefully stay at three out of four laps because my lap shouldn't count oh rest in peace mate it's fine i'm still on the track I'm still alive and send this there you go. Lap didn't count. Still says three out of four. 
for now when we do our final lap. Well, it's actually going to be another two laps. I will fast forward to the end of it, and we should be able to see like who got cold shot, etc. at the very end, and our time should have counted. And I'll show the in the analysis, the breakdown of the lap as well. And there we go. It's the finish line. So that is our race done. If I go back to the pits, if we go to results. I got the whole shot, so the whole shot's working. I got my one second of cuts. If I go to my analysis, uh, lap one was fine. Lap two is the lap that we got the cuts on. Lap three is twice the length because it didn't count first time round, so we have to go and do another one. And then lap four was back to normal. So that is all good. I'm all happy with that. All I would go and change at this point now before I'm fully done and can make final uh, adjustments to the track before saving it is I would just move these start gates back just a tiny bit so that they're actually up on top of the grates rather than being just in front of them. So there you go. You've now got your track to work with timing. Hopefully that was fairly straightforward to understand. I know some of the programs we use, like the track editor, is not too straightforward. It can be a little bit difficult, uh, but well done. The next episode will be the final one in this, which is just packaging everything together, doing those last little changes, like having a, a picture uh, before you select the track, having a picture in game as well. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Catch you guys in the next episode.